Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Oxford, North Carolina during this Easter tide. I'm the Reverend Dr. Vincent Joseph Kopp, Rector at St. Stephen's. During the recording of our services, when individuals are masked, they are at least six feet apart from one another in the presence of anyone else in the sanctuary. When people are unmasked, they are either alone or they are in the presence of someone with whom they live on a regular basis. Once again, welcome to St. Stephen's in Oxford, North Carolina.
Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church this fourth Sunday in Easter. Our service begins today on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of our people, grant that we hear his voice. We may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Acts. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Here ends the reading. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second lesson is a reading from 1 John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him who, whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, 
If our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from Him whatever we ask, because we obey His commandments and do what pleases Him. And this is His commandment, that we should believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as He has commanded us. All who obey His commandments abide in Him, and He abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a roadside pub between Donegal and Derry in Ireland, located at Barnesmore Gap, called Biddy's of Barnes. The spot, legend has it, is where two giants hurled boulders at each other with neither one winning the battle. What was left instead were two rocky hills through which the current road now threads. To the north and to the south of the gap are pasture hills where sheep graze. It is there in June of 1978 that I saw my first ever shepherd taking a break from his work. Unshaven, wearing a wool snap-ribbed cap and coarse clothing and black Wellington boots, he nursed a Guinness and smoked a cigarette in a corner seat near a window. Presumably, his sheep blazed and grazed on a nearby hillside, safe in the misty cold Irish midday. Having never been closer to sheep, than a petting zoo, I knew nothing of their natures or habits or those of shepherds. Mesmerized, I sought to reconcile my newfound smoking and drinking and snoozing shepherd with the good shepherd image of Jesus I had grown up with. The closest I came then was to imagine him with a lamb over his shoulders. 
ultimately I decided he embodied a kind of abiding that is much harder work than I had ever imagined. Today's epistle is all about abiding, while the gospel talks about what it means to be a good shepherd. In the epistle, John tells us that all who obey Jesus' commandments abide in him and he in them. In the gospel, John shows us how Jesus sees the meaning of receiving God's command. It sounds simple enough, like abiding in a pub while your sheep graze nearby, until you stop to consider the commandments Jesus asks us to obey. Believe in the name of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Love one another as he loves us. Be of one flock with one shepherd, Christ Jesus. Prepare to lay down your life for one another. Abide in Christ as Christ abides in us. Five things. I would say just five things, but doing any one of them is an entire life's work. The last two, I dare say, are the hardest commandments of all. To lay down your life for another, and to abide in Christ as Christ abides in us. This is especially true for us in our hyper-individualized culture, which values independence and winning over mutuality of heart, mind, and effort. Lay down my life for another, not on your life. Yet, some do risk their lives in their life's call whether as hired hands, as John calls them, or not. Parents, medical and military personnel, various first responders, all literally risk their lives in their work, but all are also seeking to avoid danger and not die while doing so. Now, there is another sense to laying down one's life that better fits the epistle and the gospel sense of this phrase. It is the sense that we are called by Christ to set aside our concerns and worries so as to carry, like a lamb on the good shepherd's shoulders, the concerns and worries of others, just as Jesus would or did. Little children let us love, not in word and speech, but in truth and action, the epistle says. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. As for abiding in Christ as Christ abides in us, this is equally hard, if not harder. Let me illustrate this notion with a passage from Carol Hauslander's book, A Rocking Horse Catholic, published in 1955. Hauslander was a 20th century English mystic, not quite a modern Julian of Norwich who toggled back and forth between Roman and Anglican Catholicism before settling on a true universalism. In her book, she wrote about being on a subway train in a manner that captures how she learned what it means to abide in others as Christ abides in us and vice versa. I quote, all sorts of people jostled together, sitting and strap-hanging. Quite suddenly, I saw Christ in them all. But I saw more. Not only was Christ in every one of them, living in them, dying in them, rejoicing in them, sorrowing in them. He was in them. And because they were here, the whole world was here too. All those people who had lived in the past and all those yet to come. 
This powerful experience grew in significance for her. I saw, too, the reverence that everyone must have for a sinner, instead of condoning his or her sin, which is in reality their utmost sorrow. One must com comfort Christ who is suffering in them. And this reverence must be paid even to those sinners whose souls seem to be dead because it is Christ who is the life of the soul, who is dead in them. They are his tombs, and Christ in the tomb is potentially the risen Christ. To some extent, to live in the world today is to be surrounded by multitudes in whom Christ is entombed as Houselander envisioned them. In our imperfect lives, we can count ourselves among them on more occasions than not. Christ dead in the tomb of our self-locked lives, our unbreakable hearts, is always potentially the Christ risen and living among us, too. What a radical notion to know that Christ abides in us and in others, living and dead, is to receive the call to abide in Christ, that we may live in him, even if he must die, if we must die ourselves one day and go down to the grave. To die to self for the sake of others and to abide in Christ as Christ abides in us, to learn these two things is the work of a lifetime. Not incidentally, this is what our burial of the dead rites remind us as well. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. And so, on this Good Shepherd Sunday, as you contemplate the 23rd Psalm and the Epistle and the Gospel and picture Jesus as the Good Shepherd with a lamb on his shoulders, don't forget all the other Good Shepherds out there. Think of the millions upon millions of folks who have Christ in them, either alive and animating their lives or dead and awaiting resurrection somewhere deep inside them. I know I will always picture the scruffy, lonely shepherd I saw in Donegal, abiding at Video Barnes, sipping his Guinness, looking out into the middle space, knowing his sheep are safe as he takes his midday pint and see in him one in whom Christ also abides forever. Amen. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, that the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Sam, our bishop. For Anne, our bishop suffragan. For Vince, our rector. For our diocesan family, especially St. Cyprian's. And for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. We pray especially for our president, our governor, and our mayor. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison and their families, and the victims of war and terrorism. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those in our parish family who are ill, especially for Mary, Pam, Kelly, Dick, Sissy, Leslie, and all those who are on our prayer list, praying for them either silently in our hearts or aloud. Pray that they may receive God's healing grace. I ask your prayers for the men and women who serve in our country's armed forces. Pray that God will guide their actions and protect them from harm. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.